So Adult Swim are soon to be airing the first episode of season five of Rick and Morty, and they challenged us to do that in the most dramatic fashion possible. So ultimately, we have built a model replica of Rick's ship. So the viewer who is going to see this airing of this first episode is going to do so high above the Earth so we can see the blackness of space and the curvature of the Earth behind a small screen inside of the ship. Now, we'll be using a large meteorological balloon to carry a bespoke craft. And now our craft, uh, our payload, if you like, has been built to carry our prop, Rick's ship, as well as all the sensitive technology that allows us to launch the craft high above the Earth and ultimately recover it again. We've made some bespoke rigs to uh, send our Rick and Morty spaceship all the way up into space. There's carbon fiber elements. We've got other reinforcement in there to make sure it's structurally sound. It's gonna go through some really harsh conditions on the way up. Temperatures as low as minus 60 degrees, pressures approaching zero, you know, less than 1% of the air pressure that there is at sea level, zero humidity. We've got a lot of really extreme conditions that this all needs to survive against. So there's some really detailed technology to make sure that everything works exactly how it should. That means uh, thermal regulation systems, that means pressure regulation systems, let alone all of the technology that's going on board to make sure that we can find everything again. So our screen is actually rigged up to a microcomputer. We are thermally insulating everything, we're protecting it against all of the environmental conditions that it's gonna face to make sure that it works really, really well throughout the flight. Before we get to the launch site or even begin to set off, we take weather data from over 100,000 sources across the globe. So we've got on the ground listening stations, we've got turbines, we've got oceanic models, and we also have satellite data. All of that gets pulled together into a sophisticated climate simulation system. And that allows us to predict how the atmospheric winds are gonna be behaving at any point over the next couple of days. We can use that information along with various bits of information about our craft, the amount of gas that we want to use, the size of the balloon, to calculate what direction the craft is going to move in throughout different phases of the flight through different stages of the atmosphere and what altitude it might burst at what speed it's going to parachute back down at so with all of that information we can pull together an idea of where our craft is going to be at any point throughout a flight and that gives us positional data to within about 100 meters so we can get really accurate with this Deserts are a great environment because they are very environmentally stable. They have very kind of consistent weather patterns throughout the year, and Nevada is a great example of this. All different layers of the atmosphere, we have very consistent behavior from the wind patterns. So that means our simulations can be as accurate as possible. It's also a wide open space in terms of landing sites. That's really convenient for us. We want to avoid our craft landing in any built up areas, any large bodies of water, anywhere that it could cause disruption to other airspace users. And so a massive desert is a great opportunity for that. You know, it's very easy for us to draw a circle on a map and go, well, our craft's gonna land somewhere within 500 meters of this point. We know that everywhere around that area is nice and safe for us. We are at our launch site and it is in the middle of the desert, close to the Nevada, California border. And in around one hour's time, Rick and Morty's ship is gonna begin its journey into space. Today, we're gonna to be challenging an incredible altitude. We wanna get as high as possible so we can really capture that pronounced curvature of the Earth, the blackness of space and the thin blue line of the atmosphere reduced down into a really vibrant blue band. Now, things are gonna to start to look good around 26 kilometers above the Earth. The, the gateway to near space is 19.2 kilometers, but we're gonna be challenging over 40 kilometers above the Earth today. So once we've run our final systems checks and all our calculations have been done, we know our ascent rate, our descent rates, we know all the, the mass that goes into predicting exactly where Rick and Morty's craft will land. The last thing to do is to fill our very large high altitude balloon, which is space capable, designed for exactly this in mind. Once that's filled and sealed, we go for launch. So everything is now in place. Our final calculations have been done. The cameras are rolling and we'll go for launch. So the balloon is filled, it's sealed. We need to progress our team to the center of the runway where Rick and Morty's craft will be released and they'll begin their journey into space. Three, two, one, lift off. So that's, that's our predicted landing site just over the mountains. Um, we run our simulations throughout the flight. 
uh, so that we know where it is at all times from our tracking systems. And we use our up-to-date wind mapping to make sure that we're uh, predicting it really accurately, which normally is within um, only a few hundred meters, you know, 500 feet or so. Once the balloons burst, we'll actually have a really accurate idea of where it's going to land. You know, we've occasionally caught one of our payloads before, so we hope to be really close to it when it's coming down. Yeah, so we, we need to just get on the road, um, drive around past that mountain, go pick it up. We have a listening station on the ground. We have a, another listening station on our chase down vehicle, uh, which basically then communicates with our payload in the air. And that allows us to, to look at the longitude and latitude at all times, along with the altitude and a bunch of other information from the flight. That means that we can stay underneath it all the way up and all the way back down again to landing. So here we are in the middle of the desert. It's very hot, but I've got a big smile on my face because we have just retrieved Rick and Morty's craft after it traveled to nearly 150,000 feet above the earth. Now that is high enough to see the blackness of space, the thin blue line of the atmosphere and the pronounced curvature of the earth. The results look amazing, even better than we could have hoped for. Big thanks to Adult Swim for making this all happen. It's been such an exciting project and I can't wait for you all to see the results yourselves.